full quick. So I have a big announcement to make. It's very important. You all need to know this. So we're doing this very big red initiative thing. And I decided I should probably learn how to work this light behind me. So I actually took the time and figured out the damn oh. menu. Oh, you're and I so changed hip. my light to red. You're so hip. You're so, so hip. So I'm so proud of you. I can now take part in these technical discussions that Robert Roth is starting, whether it's R27, R28, whatever. Hey, hey, Robert, thanks for calling me out on that, by the way. I appreciate that. That was, an, that was a that funny too. discussion. I well, thought yeah. about that when let's I be, saw that. Let's be clear here, folks. Most of you might remember that when I started doing this, I would show up to direct lights and I would be given a set a U of auto transformers stacked three high to put arms and legs with before even electronic dimmers exist. You're um, saying, you know, what are you, saltwater dimmer guy? No, I just, you know, that's what, that's what was, that's what the technology was at the time. There were, you know, there were no color changers, there were no moving lights, and we barely got into a Oh my God. Remember this? My dear Robert, friend, the way you, Robert, we Robert the way you lit the Last Supper was amazing. I mean, it's just, <laughs> yeah. Last Supper yeah, that, lighting was Jesus incredible. looked damn good. I, 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 uh, Robert, I, that was way before I, my time, too. Way before my time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was, Jeff. Hey, actually, uh, me and Robert talked earlier, and and I said the same thing. I don't remember the last time I used gel, to be honest with you. I I, I don't. You know, we, the only thing we use is frost right now for the Lecos. That's it. Uh, I don't remember those numbers. Lee two hundred one. You use Lee two hundred one. <laughs> uh, one fourteen. Roscoe one fourteen. That's about it. Well, that's yeah. Asian because about all you ever do is light shit in white. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> I mean, what, co what color does the car get today, Chris? White. <laughs> hey, Chris, Chris, can you like back up just a little bit from your microphone so you don't blow up the speakers in my MacBook Pro? <laughs> Me? No, yeah. Chris. Yeah, sorry. It's probably yeah. up. There you go. Use your Chris indoor. Chris just voice. really excited right now. Use your indoor <laughs> voice. Way, I'm a long way away from the lovely um, microphone, so. You're good, Robert. Look. So um, I see that Steve Warren's here, and I actually, I don't know if I should thank you or uh, punch no, you in I'm the face. Be, because I should be thanking you, mate, but I'm very happy I, to see you. I've never had a weekend. Me. I've been at my computer till 1030 oh, every night man. from six in the good. morning. Good man. Been, uh, but I, you know what though? I gotta say that um, this has probably been the most meaningful week in a very long time for me. So, and I gotta be completely honest about that. That's, that's the truth. So- Marcel, I'm so happy to see this development, you know, and it's a yeah. global problem. It's a global problem. It's a global industry. So we should be making a, a global statement. So, and yeah. you know, hats off to you, man. Absolutely fantastic. No, hats um, off to you. You guys are the ones who started the idea, got it going, handed the torch. So. Uh, no, I mean, but as I say, global thing, you know, and I think I was so inspired by seeing this great group and everyone getting together. You, you think, and that's why I wanted to introduce you to Plaza and say, look, look at what Marcel and, and Patrick and the guys are all doing. It's amazing. You know, so. Absolutely. Great stuff. Well, and honestly, I, I hope nobody from Plaza is here, but we just couldn't get a response from them. And so we just took took the ball and ran, you know. Yeah, and, good man. And yeah. then, uh, Gary White's been amazing. He's been, uh, you know, very, very helpful. Um, but yeah, we couldn't get Plaza to respond, so we just went <laughs> with it. To it yourself. Yeah. I have to say, on a personal level, I think that's what I expect from the Americans. You're like, like fuck it, nobody's yeah. doing it. We're just going to get on with it and do it. So respect that's you. That's kind of what we did. And I mean, a lot yeah. of the people, so those of you who are on this call and are not taking part in this, I apologize that we're kind of geeking out on this red alert restart thing that we're doing. But, um, but yeah. Marcel, I have to say, I think, you know, everything that uh, Michael Strickland's doing, you know, which is a, like a parallel thread and, and is so important and is sort of quite different to what is being done in the UK. But what I've noticed in the UK, even though I've had, if I'm honest, I mean, there was all of that effort. It was great to see everyone brought together, everyone, you know, people to have a chance to talk to each other. They hadn't seen each other for a long time. They could see something being done. 
Um, I was a bit frustrated because I was expecting more mainline press to be there and hungry for news. And you think, for fuck's sake, you know, just because we haven't got some pop star speaking for us, you know, what, like it doesn't matter. I mean, there were four and a half thousand people out there, uh, you know, in, in central London. But what I've noticed from that is once that news story was created, that's then been not regurgitated, but it's come up again, time and time again in, in the Guardian and the Times and the Daily Mail. And, and then we'll be able to use that as a platform to say, look, well, now that you're aware of the problem, let's yeah. look at what we can oh. do. And so we have the next tranche of, of we've got a number of teams, like six teams separated out, press. Um, each one, you know, having different sort of functions and going, right, how do we now move it forward and use the platform that we've created to take it to the next level? And I think that's, that's really important. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess part of, part of what's playing for us is, is we are in an election season. And so people are very interested in, in paying attention to something like this. The messaging is good. Um, you know, honestly, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of support, not only from within our industry, but from outside our industry. And uh, you would think people are sick to death of any talk of a charity or working for free or supplying something for free or whatever, but it's been exactly the opposite. So that's, that's amazing. amazing. Here, man. amazing really, today. really incredible. Yeah. Really incredible. Marcel, I have to ask a favor. I mean, it's, yes, sir. it's, it's half past 11 at night. I'm in France. I'm in, in, in my friend's place, which is like 400 years old. We've been drinking since afternoon. So I'd just like you to like be a little bit gentle with me for the rest of it. I've said my piece oh, and I'm oh, just going to pull back now. I thought you were going to ask if you could dance for us or something. Because I'll, like, like, I'll shut up and let you dance if that's what you want to do. No yeah, that might happen. Yeah. I mean, I think if we were to take a poll on here, no pun intended. Drinking uh, since I think if we were to take a poll good. on here, people would probably want to see Steve dance. So. Oh, no, don't tell me. Do, don't tell me. Do. Come on, we've got serious business. You just stop it, Marsha. <laughs> we'll have our times. We've had our times. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. you know, and again, back to this. So one of the things I heard, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, and it might have been John Dixon. It might have been somebody else. But just he said... Uh, you know, this is the best I've felt in six months because I actually have a mission. I have something in front of me. I'm doing lighting. I'm talking to people. And no, I'm not getting paid, but that doesn't matter. That's secondary. And, you know, that was just really, really cool. So it's a purpose, Marcel. Like, I, I feel like I have a purpose. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's good. No, yeah, I good. feel like I've gained Rose. 20 years. I feel like I'm 20 years younger than I really am. This has given me so much <laughs> energy with the purpose. Yeah. And all the excitement from all of you, too. It really is contagious. Yeah. Marcia, if I work, I would start a mission every week. <laughs> Marcia's learning how to text. It's beautiful. It is good, yeah. <laughs> she spells her name right. <laughs> Patrick, you're leaving us. A guy on a sailboat can't say I'm busy and I need to leave. I actually am, because I'm doing a drone shoot on Catalina Island. So uh, unfortunately, Ooh. I have to go. La di da. All right, Patrick, <laughs> thank you for joining us. And thank you for, Patrick is, is our, what we're calling regional directors on this thing. Patrick's he's our regional director regional. for LA. So uh, he's managing our LA market and doing an amazing job and getting all kinds of interest out there. So thank you, Patrick. Go enjoy thank your you sailboat. I will, Marcel, thank you. <laughs> Bye. All right. Um, Steve, you said you weren't going to talk anymore. Now you're raising your hand again. No, I was waving Patrick goodbye. I was feeling good. As I thanked you, as I mentioned you and Patrick Dearson, I thought it's everyone. But if you start naming people by names, you know, then suddenly it's going to be like midnight or one o'clock in the morning by the time you guys <laughs> yeah. finish and it'll be nothing else for me. So I thought, shut up, Steve. Um, because right. it is a team thing. As you say, Marsha, it's pulled everyone together and, and, and it will continue to do that. Okay, so I've muted Steve now, and let's see how long it takes <laughs> to figure that out. <laughs> Steve, I love you, but you're uh, drunk. Phoenix, Phoenix is starting to literally heat up. I mean, we're already hot here temperature-wise, but uh, lots of traction, clear wing involved, and uh, I've got uh, Cindy Kenna involved and Todd Stover involved and lots of good traction, so I think we're going to have a pretty good turnout. I'm happy. Uh, it's unfortunate we had to move the event 
um, but I'm I'm happy because it gives it more gives us more time to plan, of course, right? Agreed. Yeah. So um, I mean, it wasn't ideal, but it it was becoming uh, too big of an issue not to listen to it, so we had right. to listen to it. So um, yeah, and you know, I was talking with uh, with Michael Strickland, who's going to give us an update here shortly. But I was talking with him earlier, and uh, Michael said that because he sent out this notice on this uh, red alert restart a couple of days ago or yesterday, what day are we? Wednesday, so it was on Monday. Um, he's been getting more response to that now than he is to his political messages. So that's a good thing. We're getting Michael back into the lighting business and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm afraid he's gonna put signs up in his yard and start saying vote for Michael Strickland. So we got to rescue him and pull him back to lighting because he was always a good lighting guy. So, yeah. yeah, Michael, what have you got for us? Well, thank you very much, Marcel, and thank all of you all for being here. Uh, I'm going to assume most of you know all of the backstory, and at this point, the backstory is kind of irrelevant. We are where we are. And I have an old expression when you're stuck in quicksand, don't worry about how you got there, worry about getting out. So, uh, having said that, you got the last two or three things. You know, I think I told you a week ago, don't worry, they'll be back. The biggest fear was and still is re-election. What has really brought them back is re-election. Uh, funding for schools, while I told you would be a big deal, they don't even talk about that. And I spent all day yesterday and all day the day before with various legislators and their staffs and, and uh, one of them actually sent their chief of staff up here to sit with me for four hours yesterday. And uh, numbers of you have talked to numbers of people. Uh, and, and to show you how weird this, all of this stuff is, uh, I ended up two or three days ago hooked up with uh, the CEO of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I, I sent him a nice thank you and we got to talking. And of course, that's in Cleveland. And as I've told you, Jimmy Haslam, who owns the Browns, is a dear friend of mine. And his wife is named Dee. They actually own the team together. So I just asked him, do you know Jimmy and Dee? Well, it turns out that Dee's on the board of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, you know, it, it just 45,000 degrees of separation. And, and a lot of that has gone on uh, through, through this process. Uh, you know, where we sit legislatively uh, is simple but complicated. The bill that I sent you uh, they work quickly and they work in cut and paste. And even I didn't notice page one, if anybody's looked at it, there's, there's language on there about uh, Taiwanese children or something. <laughs> Apparently whoever did, did that cut and pasted it over some old bill language in the first three or four sentences make no sense. Well, it's because they cut and pasted and just shot it to me. Uh, but that bill's not out in the public yet. Uh, so those of you in my email chain have it and had a chance to look at it. What it is really, it's most of the language from the Heels bill and they changed some things and they put in some post office money and here's what's gonna happen. Uh, the Democrats had announced that they're going to drop the post office only skinny bill on Saturday. So the Republicans rushed and got this thing that I sent you together say, which is a cobbling of, of elements of the HEALS Act with $10 million for, excuse me, $10 billion for the post office. The devil's in the details because if you read the bill, the 10 billion for the post office is actually forgiveness for a $10 billion loan that the post office got in the CARES Act. So that's gonna be a sticking point between the two sides. Um, there's, it's a starting point, which is what I've told you. It's simply a starting point. So don't, end, don't worry about, okay, that's where it's gonna end up. I spent all day yesterday and half of the day before, and this is what I believe. This is not fact, it's just what I believe based on a ton of conversation. The Senate told me they are not gonna vote on that bill that I sent you this week. They just floated it to be seen to be having something because their greatest fear is not being reelected. The Democrats are gonna drop the post office only bill. Uh, I believe the Democrats will vote on Saturday and I believe it will pass on Saturday and it will be sent over to the House. The House next Monday, excuse, excuse me, it will pass the House on Saturday being sent to the Senate. I believe on Monday or Tuesday, the Senate will take the bill from the House, drop some or all of it into the bill that I sent you. 
package that and show it to the Democrats and say, this is what we're thinking. I don't think they'll actually vote on it. I think next week they'll just go back and forth and argue about what's in it and what's not in it. I think that they're gonna run through the 28th of, of uh, August without actually voting on what, what I will call the Senate bill. Uh, the, the House has let it be known they have no appetite to do that. Uh, but I think that's what's going to happen. So I think that it's gonna push it to September uh, September 1st or 2nd before any further action takes place. Uh, so don't, don't lose faith or focus next week. I just believe that the political posturing that's going to take place next week will take place. And if you remember on one of my emails, I told you that when they come back in September, they have to deal with the thing called the continuing resolution. And what that is, is kicking the can down the road for how we finance the government. And for those of you that or up on that. That's what they do every year. They just pass a bill that passes the previous bill that says we can borrow more money and they move on. Uh, I don't think at this point there'll be a lot of uh, uh, battling over the continuing resolution because we're spending money like drunk Indians. And uh, so that that is all in front of us. Uh, the two big concerns that our industry has in there is that that is the original Senate Bill 4321, which gives all of you 10 weeks of PPP and nothing else. That doesn't work for most venues. It doesn't work for our friends at Neva. It doesn't do much for, for most of us because you know, we haven't, we, we ran out of money June the 15th. So holistically, we need more money. Uh, it doesn't do anything for manufacturers. It doesn't do anything for uh, you know, the, the facilities that are owned by governments. Uh, in other words, a city or a state-owned facility, what most people don't realize is that most facilities, while they're owned by a government entity, they're self-funding. They, they work off operations. They don't get a big old check from the government to survive. So we're, you know, we're having those conversations in the background. Then, of course, there's all the enhanced unemployment stuff, which the language in here says $300, but also they're reliant on another 100 from the state. And, of course, there's been a lot of pushback on that because even at 400, there are those who are pushing for 600. So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in there and what I and a whole bunch of other people have been doing for the past, really for four to six weeks, is the two parallel paths I've told you about. One was to cover our butt and get the bill 4321 doubled, where it's 20 weeks, not 10. Because at least if we got 20 weeks of PPP, instead of 20% of the industry being in a better position, 60% of the industry will be in a better position but 40% won't be. I've had a bunch of conversations and if they don't do restart, a lot of people are in serious, serious trouble. Uh, at this point, I and others are hammering and hammering and hammering. You've got to incorporate restart. And I'm waiting on three or four people to answer me. I've looped in Nam. I've looped in Chris, who is Nam's uh, lobbyist. I mean, we talk daily five times a day we're trying to figure out right now which of two paths we're gonna take. We are either going to continue to push for restart and change the language in 4321 so that if it ends up at 4321, we have a bigger 4321, or are we just going to push for restart? Uh, and, and I've got a lot, of, a lot of talking heads involved in that from the political point of view, both sides of the aisle trying to figure out what the best path forward is. I can tell you politically my opinion of what the, what the legislators are going to do. I think that they're going to come up with something out of all of this. And, and again, it wanders into schools and it, you know, it wanders into all these other subjects that yes, they do touch your life, but that's not why we're here. Uh, I think they're gonna come up with what they come up with and I don't have the bandwidth to keep up with the other pieces, but, but I think that if they end up with 4321 giving us 10 weeks of money, they'll be able to shut the book, do their hands, and announce to the 340 million people in America, look, we took care of small business and go home. Because who's going to know that what they did for small business was not that much? Well, just, just the 20 or 30 million people affected. Uh, but, but you've seen legislation in the past that did nothing. Uh, again, 
PPP for 10 weeks is better than nothing, but it's, it's far from what we need. So I'm prepared for that fight. I'm not saying it's going to end that way, but, but legislators do have a bad habit of, of making something look like something else. And I think you know what I mean. They'll, they'll say, we took care of small business. Look, we gave them another whatever. Now, to explain to you why this does and doesn't work, uh, there's a thing, all bills are controlled by a thing called the top line. Top line means how much are we gonna spend? They're pretty well at $1.75 trillion. I mean, it's off the books, no one will admit that, but they're pretty well at $1.75 trillion. They then basically look at, okay, they've agreed to $105 billion uh, for education. You know, they've agreed down the line, right now they're, they're arguing between $10 billion and $25 billion for the post office. Uh, but, but they have these numbers and they put them in a simple spreadsheet and, and they have to work under the top line. Right now, all bills are scored by the CBO and Congressional Budget Office. Uh, right now, neither HEALS nor RESTART has been scored. I've shared this with you. But the, the best guess, and I believe it to be good, is that 4321 is a $58 billion price tag on it. Well, Marco Rubio knows that, and that's the biggest number that he's happy with. I've gotten that from his team. He doesn't want to go a dollar beyond 58 billion. There are a number of other legislators on the Republican side that don't even want to go that far. Uh, the, the, the folks on the Democratic side never really thought about business for small, excuse me, money for small business. So they don't really have a number in mind. But the reason that we're stumbling on restart right now is simply that uh, restart scores, in my opinion, at 230 billion. And the two sponsors believe it's 300 to 350 billion. Well, theoretically, as I'm told, if you stick the 58 billion in the top line number, it works. Anything much north of that pushes them over 1.75 trillion. So what we're fighting is uh, the amount of money that they believe that restart will cost. They love restart. And if you've looked and seen who all signed on, you know, we're up to, 54 senators and 108 uh, House members. Got phenomenal bipartisan support, but the price tag is so big. And even some of the people that have signed on to it, they want to be seen to be doing the right thing. But when you go back and talk to them one-on-one -on -one, and they realize out of the you know 30 things they want to do, it's all about money. And that keeps pushing the price tag of small business relief uh, down. Now, the good news is, uh, if you recall back about three weeks, there's $134.5 billion still left from the CARES Act. So from one point of view, if you go back and get the $134.5 billion from the CARES Act, and then you add to it the $58 billion price tag that they have on the, uh, on the 4321, you're up close to $200 billion. Uh, but that's just my philosophy. It's also other people's philosophy because there are those who want to say no, no, that 134.5 uh, billion that's left over from the last PPP needs to count in this 1.75 trillion top line. And, and again, they're, they're beginning to argue about money. And if we can win the argument that the 134.5 billion still sitting in the CARES Act uh, does not count in the 1.75 trillion, I think we are at 200 million, excuse me, 200 billion, which in my opinion, comes very close to funding Restart. And again, to remind you, Restart would give most everyone 45% of last year's income, and then you do with it as you see fit. Uh, the pieces related to payroll and other expendables are 100% write offable and the pieces that aren't, uh, you can convert currently to a seven year, two to 3% loan. Uh, they were talking about pushing that to a 10 year, 1% loan. Right now that conversation's gone quiet. Doesn't mean it's not gonna happen, but they're looking at the big rocks. So that's what we're doing right now. The reason you haven't gotten another call to action is there's a team of us working on exactly what the next call to action should be, because we are going to have to send out yet another email, uh, and, and, and it will be in conjunction with this uh, uh, red alert thing. On the good news side, uh, this, is, this has all been picked up. Today, Mnuchin had a, uh, 
today Mnuchin had a phone call uh, with with all the senators, and uh, I was I was able to listen in on the phone call, and without any prompting, uh, as he was talking about what's going on in his opinion, uh, at the tail end of the conversation, he said we need to do this for that, and we need to do this for that, and out of the blue he said. And entertainment has been so dramatically negatively impacted, we've got to take a look at that. Now, again, I've got people talking to him and I've even spoken to him twice, but the point is he, he pulled that out of the blue. And uh, the, the, I guess the, the best news is we're getting huge traction with the red alert thing. Uh, it, 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 it's all about awareness and we're gonna get two bites of that apple. First bite will be the press that night and all things leading up to it and thank all of you all for the phenomenal job. But the second piece is for the next three or four days, we're gonna, we're gonna grind this into the media, not only within our echo chamber, but into the mainstream media. And we've already got a, several mainstream media outlets linked up. And then uh, the final piece, which some of you know, uh, Tuesday morning between seven and 9 a.m., I'm gonna be on CNBC Squawk Box. So that will be our single biggest moment uh, with, with a, a national audience of several million people. And the CNBC people reached out to, to, to me, to us to do this because A, they had heard about the, the entertainment situation, but they had also heard about the red light, uh, excuse me, the uh, red alert. And uh, so they, it's gonna be a 10 minute segment and they're gonna wanna talk holistically about, uh, about the state of the entertainment industry but, but they also want to want to really talk about the red alert thing. So we will get uh, a lot of good press on the 25th. I will email you and tell you exactly what time that is when it airs. And we are working right now on some other sort of mainstream television media as we go forward to, again, bring this to the forefront. I'll close by saying, how do we get them to, to use Restart? It's by constant pressure. And I apologize for being so long-winded, but I'll shut up and take questions now. Hey, Michael, a couple things quickly. So first of all, <clears throat> thank you for the update. It's incredible as always. Um, on the 25th, when you're on CNBC, uh, I would like to mention that there's this website in our industry called GearSource that's la launching a brand new site <laughs> on the 25th. So if you wouldn't mind mentioning that just somewhere in the conversation. Um, but no... <laughs> Josh, you watch it, buddy. I see you. I see you, man. You're on my screen. I see you. Um, no, seriously, again, thank you. And that, that CNBC thing is going to be huge for, for uh, what we're doing and for our industry, of course. Um, one question I have is, <clears throat> I've had some people say to me, okay, so you're lighting some bi buildings red, big deal. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to and I, I, first of all, I don't think people understand the scale of what we're really doing. Like we've got all of these uh, regional directors who each one of these people is telling me, okay, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got this. I've got like a hundred major locations in my city. And so, you know, I just asked, we're talking about getting t-shirts made, for example. I asked how many we need and people are saying like, Two to three thousand. So if if we're getting two to three thousand T-shirts, I think we're getting two to three thousand or one thousand or fifteen hundred or two thousand locations um, where we're going to have uh, uh, lights on them. So how do we translate that into you know senators and Congress people and and God forbid the president has found out what we're doing and said, oh geez, I better take a look at these people. How do, we, how do we turn that into real noise that gets real results? Uh, I, I, again, I think on that, there's, there's three plays. And, and to me, the biggest play is the third step. Uh, the first step is everything we do between now and showtime. Uh, you know, we'll continue to, 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 via the media, via social media. I mean, I, I put it up on, a, on my company website, and I'm sure other you, others uh, of you have done the same. But the point is politicians don't go look at, at our company websites. They, they don't care. Uh, so we're, again, we're talking inside our own echo chamber, but, but there is a critical mass created by, by what we're doing and it is bouncing out. And, and Marcel knows this and I know this, but when you get people reaching out to us like we have, like the, the mayor of West Hollywood 
and 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 the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I think Dave, you did the, you didn't you do the West Hollywood one? And uh, th there's just for every one of those that that one of you sitting there knows about, there's there's a hundred that you don't know about because I and or Brad and or Marcel are fielding these these very pointed direct emails to one of us, and then we share it with the other two, and each one leads in multiple directions. So we are very far outside of our echo chamber because the municipalities are excited. I can give you a, for instance, today I reached out to uh, uh, the, the state guy that would handle this kind of thing, as well as the city guy in Nashville that would handle this kind of thing, as well as the chamber of commerce guy, because I know all three of them. And after telling them they're just on fire and within 15 minutes, we had all the major buildings in Nashville cleared to go red. So because I knew those three people that took one email and it was yes, 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 yes. And that's happening in other cities. I'm not at all trying to, to pretend I'm the only person. A lot of you have done and are doing that, and thank you. But but again, those people are talking because my phone's ringing and I'm getting emails and I'm getting texts, and there's a level of excitement. So that's kind of the first step. To me, the second step is going to be a what I call a local media play that night. We're going to get, I think, really good local media in however many markets we're in because the local media is going to be reached out to, and they're going to come and they're going to photograph it. They're going to put it on their local news channels. Uh, at the same time, what we're working at behind the scenes is also to get national media play that night. Right now, that's the one point I don't know how successful we're going to be with. The CNBC thing should be very, very helpful. But but I, I do hope we get a national media play. And then the third piece, which for the legislators might be the most effective, is we're going to end up with a whole lot of photographs of this. And uh, these pictures, uh, we're going to combine into whatever we combine them into. And, and, and that will be something that, again, we will send to all of our legislators. And I honestly think that might be the biggest thing uh, of all the things that we do. And uh, our friends at Live Nation reached out to us. And uh, uh, Marcel knows this. They have a number of phenomenal historic facilities that can't be lit red because they're just buildings with no lights. They're going to go into a number of their uh, uh, iconic facilities and turn all the stage lights on red and photograph them and send us the pictures. Yeah. And, and, and other venues have offered to do the same. So we're going to end up with a phenomenal photographic history of what we did, which we will then uh, get into the hands of all the legislators. And so that, that's, to answer your question, Marcel, that's what I see as the three big plays. And you're muted. Cool, thanks. Thank you, Michael. Anyone? You know, I'm just going to piggyback. Uh, hey, Michael, I know we were we were chatting a few days ago also about Pelosi's camp, and uh, you know, the good word is uh, I did hear back from them, and uh, the email got passed along to our policy team. So, kind of the reason I'm, I'm what I'm mentioning is, you know, Michael is very, very clear. And he's been very clear, at least with me that, you know, the more we put our word out there, the more action that's going to, of course, take place. Um, you know, I, I, listen, to me, I think what's going to be really, really critical here is, is content. You know, um, there's a narrative here. There's a story. Moving the date, I think, you know, to the first definitely changes the narrative to the media. And if, you know, I mean, just from seeing how many of us are, of course, combined here, if we're able to even create some sort of video content that has the ability to go viral before, it's just going to spread the, the message that much quicker. Um, you know, that's hey, my um, <clears throat> I just, I just want to, to echo what, what Dave and Michael were saying. Michael, I, I feel absolutely right by this, this local... I was sort of quite disappointed that there wasn't more mainstream, you know, the heavy hitters, the times and so on there on the night. But I got the feeling that because we had the smaller ones, as you say, the locals and the ones like music industry press, and we had the assets, Dave, as you say, we had the content and the assets. It's almost like the mainstream ones felt they'd missed out on something or like, shit, we didn't cover this properly. And then over the next week, we saw next week, we you know, just one after the other after the other make big large articles coming out in really you know in mainstream national newspapers so i think you're right it's all about content and it's all about getting that content and 
and, and pushing it out to the ones that we can access and influence because the bigger ones will then pick it up in the days that follow. And that's fine because we need, it's not a one day thing, is it? It's uh, ongoing, yeah, we need to build up to a crescendo. So yeah, just amazing mm -hmm. what you guys it, are doing. Uh, that's exactly. why I said I thought the third piece would be the biggest piece because we'll have all that phenomenal content. We'll be able to push yeah. that yeah. for a while to come. But back to you, Dave, there's a number of you on this call that have had one-on-ones with me and you're doing things like Dave has done. I mean, numbers of you that I see here. It's just that, Dave, you know what you're doing, but you probably don't know what anybody else on this screen is doing. Exactly. Uh, I do, Marcel does, Brad does, uh, because we're the three people that kind of are playing center field. But, but over 50% of you in this call are doing something like Dave's doing. Uh, just actually with everyone on this call, with their artists, any designers, any production designers that have content, we're, we're working on a press push, uh, basically reaching out uh, in a PSA type market. Cosmo is kind of starting to spearhead that, where he's getting Steven Tyler and, and other people to um, basically there's a script. Brian Johnson, Angus Young. Uh, Jimmy Page, I think you <laughs> promised already. <clears throat> Madonna, but, but Queen of England. Are, but we are looking to push out, do a pre-roll push out on social media with these stars making it kind of a thing to the public so the public is aware. So pulling that star power. So anyone that has contacts, please reach out to your artist. I've already reached out to mine. Um, and, and, and we have a script, just hand it to them and have them do a little, uh, a little B-roll PSA type thing. It would be yeah, very all, helpful. All, all, content is good. all content is good for us. We're, we're asking for pictures, uh, pre-pictures, uh, buildings, Matt, everything for now to get into the sizzle reel. Uh, say, Matt, do you there. have something that we can send to the artists other than just a script? I mean, is there a website or, I mean, I'm sure there is that. I know it's being yeah. built up and there's some links a, on the chat, but that would be something it, really easy to send to their managers and, and start that ball rolling. Feel free to reach out, I think, to Cosmo. There is a script. We have a press release. There are logos. We also actually have a viral logo similar to the black square for uh, the B, uh, Black Lives Matter movement which we only want to push on the day of the event, September 1st. Uh, it's, it's basically the red alert, we make events, but it's a red background. And we just kind of want to push that. So if you uh, can push that to your clients to put on their social media, yeah, but, that but, would be very helpful. But also Josh, like obviously any one of us will jump on the phone with anyone's people. So like if you bring us, you know, Justin Bieber or something, we will absolutely get on the phone with their people and we'll say, think, here's what we're doing. I think doing. that it's, it's more reaching thing. out, like reaching out to Maverick yeah, no, and, and hitting all of the managers at once, just if there's a, a formal thing. And at that point, yeah, it would there be is. putting somebody who and also, speak better to it than me. And also like I've reached out to several of my artists personally and they've signed on to do it. So if you have a personal relationship rather than going through, I know rather than going through managers, cause they're kind of like, eh, just kind of, you know, use those you know, personal relationships. One, one question, Matt, or, or, you know, this might actually be a suggestion. You know, what we really might need to do is create a certain template email or something that's right. really, really specific that can be altered, of course, appropriately, because I know if everybody's kind of doing something different, even though it's for the same goal, um, we don't know some of these individuals, how many people they're getting hit with and what kind of information. And Dave, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. And, and, you know, just with our own group in our own echo chamber, everybody has a different agenda. Everybody has ideas. So we've done a really good job so far of gathering a group of really passionate, amazing individuals and keeping them on the same page. And so now as it relates to artists, all we did was we picked Cosmo. We said, hey, Cosmo's a really cool dude. He's a good guy to speak to artists and to speak to managers and stuff. And so we, we just said, hey, you know, Cosmo's our guy. And as far as how to approach them and, and reach out to them and all that stuff, we're kind of working on it. I mean, we do have one sheet document. Um, we don't even have a website yet. We bought a, a, a domain two or three days. Remember, this started on last week's call. 
and so this Friday we had our first meeting and today we've got like 60 regional uh, directors around this country that have a hundred locations each that they're working on and so it's grown really quickly but um, we have a website I think that's popping up tomorrow which is we make events.org um, the Facebook page is getting revamped and made prettier and be more you know whatever uh, Instagram one of the other things that we're doing is we're trying to put together and I think Christian Jackson's on this call so I don't want to throw them under the bus, but we're trying to put together a, a sort of evening of on September 1st, that's gonna be like a New Year's event where it starts hopefully at the Empire State Building and that turns red and we've got a man on the ground or a woman on the ground with a microphone who goes, wow, look at that. And you know, here we are in New York City, over to you, Bob. And then we've got the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia and then we've got something else and then we've got something else. So and we move our way until we get to Hawaii. We stopped at LA in our initial talks, but we have Bob Harmon on this call who's managing Hawaii for us. And so we get all the way over to Hawaii five hours later. And um, so, you know, we're working on a lot of stuff, but it's very dynamic and, and there's just a lot of stuff to do. I, so, I will, Michael, I will let, let, let me add one thing because I think a lot of people are unaware uh, the, the 16, 20 weeks I've been doing this, the way I describe it to most people now is, is what, what I'm doing, what we're doing is highly, highly, highly inefficient, but it's extraordinarily effective. Uh, and the reason is you go look at all of our social media. None of us have huge social media compared to uh, pop stars and whatnot. We're insignificant. Uh, in, in social media. So the world doesn't come to our websites and our social media, we do. So for us to, 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 to try to do it in a efficient way and an effective way probably wouldn't be as impactful. But what we've created is each one of you is a silo and each one of your silos, you're kind of connected through, through my emails and these phone calls and all of that stuff. And then you go out and do it. And then it feeds back into the, back into the hive and then the word gets out. Now, I know it's tough to understand because the truth is, holistically, I'm the only one that's getting the massive amount of information that I'm getting about the legislation, and then I'm trying to you know, get it back to you, and Marcel and I and Brad are the only ones getting the uh, red alert stuff and getting it back to you, but I assure you what you're doing is working. It, it is extraordinarily, extraordinarily uh, effective, but, but I understand that you don't see it. And a number of people said, well, why don't we have a website about what you're doing, Michael? And why isn't it all there? And why don't you look at it? And it, it, it's very fluid and it's all about relationships. And, you know, just like Dave bringing in the mayor of uh, West Hollywood. I mean, it's, it's working. I will say one of the, the most powerful things was getting IATSE on board, like international is fully on board with us. That was a huge, ask and push this weekend that I worked on with Brad and that's funneling through to all the IATSE unions and they're a hundred percent on board uh, and whatever we need. So, you know, asking, you know, we'll have hands for days. I was told by my local one rep here, if we want 5,000 stagehands in Times Square, we're going to get 5,000 stagehands in Times Square. So that alone is a massive, massive push. Hey, and Matt. Matt, yeah. we want 5,000 stagehands in Times Square. Cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. It. Just saying. I mean, we fact, actually, let's do I, that. I mean, the most exciting thing is right now we're doing a case push from MSG to Times Square. That is one of our events. And MSG is signed on to be the staging place. And we're working on getting the Times Square Association on board. And we're going to make a, a huge event out of this and light up yeah. all the billboards of Times Square. Yeah. Yeah, no, Matt, Matt and uh, Kelly Easterling in, in New York have done an incredible job pulling some stuff together. Um, and Chris, I see you there, Chris McMean, adjusting your beard and stuff. I'm sure you're helping them as well. Kevin O'Brien uh, as well. Kevin O'Brien. Oh, yeah, and show. Kevin O'Brien. Yeah, for sure. I mean, all of you guys, you guys are doing an incredible job. I know today Matt was saying anybody got you know, access to some of these particular musicians, let's get somebody on one of these stages. You know, there's so many amazing ideas that are flying in right now. Like we're all part of this WhatsApp 
chat group. And if any of you wants to get added, by the way, that means you're going to be given a task or a job or some work to do. But um, this WhatsApp group, the ideas that are coming in from people like in Las Vegas, Vicky today had some incredible ideas and just all over the country. So, um, so yeah, I mean, awesome. Awesome. Any, anybody else have anything for Michael? I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of new people on here, so I don't know if you know how influential this guy has been, but Michael has been sort of the, uh, well, not sort of, absolutely, the uh, lobbyist for our community. You know, we're, we're a tiny little group of people in this big world of uh, everybody's got their hand out right now. And Michael's done an incredible job sort of pulling us up that, that list of priorities and, and uh, you know, getting our name out there and stuff. So I know two people have raised their hand and I don't know who they are, but go ahead and talk. Michael, have you uh, got any ideas on how to get mainstream media more involved? That sounds like Randy Wade, and I'm not positive it is, but is it? It is. Okay. Hi, Randy. So we've got a um, we've got a PR person that is from our industry, and then we have one PR firm and a second that we're talking to outside of our industry to sort of get out of that echo chamber, and. Um, so that's, that's part one. Part two is uh, Michael is on CNBC, as he mentioned, uh, next week. Michael is talking to Fox News. I'm talking to some news agencies. You know, we are willing to get out there and talk to as many people as we possibly can to get this, this word out. I think everyone who's been 21 weeks now on this, this uh, happy hour knows that I don't have a problem talking. So I'm happy to get out there and speak to anyone that'll listen and certainly, you know, share the, the plight of our industry. But um, I don't know, Randy, I mean, if you know PR people and you can help us connect to some PR people and to some mainstream media, I think we have an amazing story. And by the time, you know, these people start covering us, we're going to have you know, a huge number of buildings that are confirmed to be lit and buildings and and locations, because not all of them are buildings. Some of them are a mountain, some of them are a whatever. So, well, first of all, I think that uh, uh, getting your major market um, media involved with their editors and, and their entertainment people, I don't know if there's a, um, you know, a, uh, an effort being made for those particular publications as well, you know, LA, New York. Uh, Nashville. Uh, is anything going on in that direction? Yes. Yeah, I, can, I can tell you Nashville is, and I can also tell you that uh, I don't know if Stephen Vitale is on here or not from Pyrotechnica, but Stephen. I know it's uh, Rocco on. Is Rocco on here? It, 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 anyway, Stephen and Rocco have been just superstars in, in the legislative process and taking, taking us in so many directions, but, but through them, uh, we've, we've been connected with uh, Time Magazine, New York Times, Washington Post, Yahoo, and Bloomberg, and uh, still still playing on those people to get to get you know, media exposure for our next move. Uh, I've also got somebody, uh, an industry person that that believes they can get us some some more national uh, media coverage via television, uh, generally for what we're doing, but but specifically for this particular event we're going to do. And I just began that conversation yesterday, and the, the lady that's doing that assures me she can she can get us to network television. So well, Roy, Reuters is that. another Reuters is another direction to follow because they're very progressive and very attuned to the entertainment industry, as opposed to some of the other um, media. Yeah, um, I would definitely include them in the list as well because they're uh, they're usually very uh, you know very involved. I'm also connected to AP, and AP has run three stories that have, have taken pieces of what I've said about what we're doing, and, and all three of those have really run globally, but they've been, they've been in larger stories about music, and I, I said this to y'all before, uh, I had a football call before this call because I work in the football world too, and uh, the, the, the football world and the music world and the entertainment world have the same problem, and you all know this, that the bulk of the public sees Bono and the Rolling Stones and 
all of these stars and they think that they're rich and we all work for them and we're all getting paid and we're all rich and they move on. Well, it's the same thing in the sports world. They believe that all athletes are wealthy and everyone that works for an athlete's wealthy. But the truth is, you know, th there's, there's 50 athletes that are phenomenally wealthy and there's 50 pop stars that are phenomenally wealthy. And then there's the rest of us. And this is about the rest of us. And it's, it's been, you know, for 20 weeks trying to change that message. And that's what I hope to do on this CNBC call. And in some of this national media stuff is change that message that just because uh, Elton John and Mick Jagger are filthy rich and okay, we're not. Yep. Um, hey, Michael. I, Michael, I have a quick question for you. Um, I just heard a bunch of senators are signing up for the Save Our Stages Act. How, what, what are you hearing about that? Same as it ever was. There are a number of, of acts out there, including the one that Adam Schiff did, that, that would take care of people that 1099 and W-2. They're all, again, called carve-outs. And they're, they're, I'm told there will be no carve-outs. There's going to be a singular focus of money for small business, not a particular business. And I've said before, you know, the, their story in, in, for 50 years has been, we don't want to pick the winners and losers. Now people come back and say, well, wait a minute. They did the auto industry and they did the airline industry and they did, you know, they did the carnival, the, the cruise line industry. Yes, they did. But if you go look at those deals, every one of those is a loan. Every one of those is a loan. When you go back to eight and nine, the federal government, when they bailed out the auto industry, as criticized as that was, it was one of the most profitable things that, that the government did in the last 10 years because they got all their money back and a handsome reward. And that's what's going on in the auto industry and in the airline industry. They're, they're basically loans to those, uh, to those people because no one else has that much money to loan them. But, but, but what I'm hearing about all of these carve-outs is uh, Chuck Schumer stood up with, uh, with uh, uh, the guy from LCD Sound System the other day, two days ago, and, and said, yes, I'm all for this. But, but again, at the end of the day, I'm assured both sides of the aisle, they're not going to do any carve-outs. So we've got a, a gentleman here that's under the name Mirabella Angel, and I'm, I don't know your name. So yeah, uh, this you've is, had uh, your hand up very quietly for a long time, so I'm sorry we didn't get you. Yeah, John Witzel from Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm using my daughter's um, iPad for this. Perfect. And her name's Mirabella. She works in the film business. Um, but uh, this is a question for Michael. Um, you said that uh, Congress is probably going to uh, take some action around September 1st. And I'd just like your perspective on the promises and the perils of coverage for an event. Uh, if our event is the first and Congress, it's the first day back in session, you know, media is going to cover that. Are there ways for us to think about playing that to the max? Oh, no, they, they will not be in session. The, they don't come back in session until the 8th. My, my point, th this has all happened, happening off the table, out of the room. This is just quiet conversation. But no one's in session and won't be until the 8th. Uh, the House comes back the 8th. The Senate comes back the 15th. So th there's a long window till they, quote, come back. You know, what I believe is going to happen is through uh, a unanimous consent, uh, the big four are just going to work it all out sometime between now and then, and then they'll just tell their tell their uh, their folks, okay, we're passing this by unanimous consent, and, and it will. It just takes one person to kill the unanimous consent, but but I do believe because of re-election and and because of the financial needs of the school system that that it, it will pass. What I meant to say was around the first or second, I think will be the first time they in earnest start going, okay, this is where we are. I, I just think that next week is going to be a whole lot of back and forth. Yeah. All right. So another, another gentleman who's quietly had his hand up for a long time is Viren. I don't know if you're trying to talk, but you're muted if you are. Uh-oh. Lost your chance. Who else has questions for Michael? <clears throat> Anyone? This is your moment. Come on, Rob. Guy knows everything. 
sort of. Hey, so hey Marcel. Michael, Michael, just real quick. Um, I know with the Restart Act, you mentioned, like, I guess right now there's 108 co-sponsors. Um, is there any major updated points that if we are sending out emails, we are reaching out to, uh, you know, more on the bureaucratic end, any major talking points um, that we really, really want to push now versus kind of what's been, uh, you know, adjusted and edited in the Neva emails and, and so on. Red alert restart. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was what well, I said earlier. Yeah, earlier restart. day. There, there's there's, there's about eight of us trying to figure out what that talking point needs to be. And I, I hope to have that narrowed down by Friday. Cool. Because that's what I'm trying to, of course, nail down is the narrative, knowing, you know, more than anything, moving the date, it changed the narrative right, right away for the media's eye. And, yeah. and it's just trying to look at what kind of narrative can be pushed locally, because uh, on the first, if it's having local politicians that are going to be in front of the media, that becomes the easy way to push getting the media to the local events. And, you know, and it's making sure the email going to those politicians is, is pretty spot on. Absolutely. As I said, there's, there's about eight of us that, that do Zoom calls twice a day trying to figure out what the message needs to be. And, and, and he, here's the decision. Uh, at some point, we've got to go with a really laser focused ask because we're getting close to the finish line. I mean, we really are. They're, they're going to get this done certainly by the 15th of August, I would believe. But uh, I, every day I needle my politician friends and, and, and their staff. And, and sometimes you'll get more out of staff than you will out of the politicians. But I, you know, once I get four or five of the political leaders to tell me that something is or isn't gonna happen, you know, if three people say, hey, it'll never be restart, th then I will believe it. Or if they say, hey, it's gonna be restart, then I will believe it. But that's kind of why you know about the $1.75 trillion. I've gotten that from a number of sources. You can Google it all day long, you're not gonna find it in the press because nobody's talking. Same thing with this bill, I, unless it's come out since we've been on the phone, the media doesn't have it. You can go to the New York Times and they talk about the fact that they know that it exists. And I'm really amazed they haven't got it because I say I've sent it out to you all and you've sent it out to people. And, and I, I now know that, that once this thing's rebroadcast, it's everywhere. And I'm just amazed that the media hasn't picked up on it yet. So yeah. what is the official name of this program? Because if you say it's Red Alert Restart, but there's a portion perhaps of, of uh, HEALS money being reused, maybe somebody else, a politician might call it HEALS. And if you go to uh, We Make Events or hashtag We Make Events, it takes me to the events that have happened in London. Yeah, there's some, yeah. Of, the, some of those issues are, are, are gonna be handled by our incoming marketing people. But as far as the, um, Red Alert Restart, we have agreed as a group of people with Michael's input as well, that Restart was the thing as an industry that was gonna benefit the most people for us and the most companies for us. <clears throat> so for us, Red Alert Restart was the big thing. And then we started looking at this unemployment deal. And so we tied in with, Brad, you're gonna jump in and tell me the name of the group that we tied in with. ExtendPUA.org extendpua.org for um, the unemployment extension. And so they are part of our sort of push forward here and our marketing effort and our branding effort and everything else. But really, I mean, you know, I, I spoke at length with Michael and I said, for our industry, what is the very best thing that we can push and the very best message we can push? And, uh, and it was restart. So we came up with this red alert restart Thing. So and, and, and Restart that, does extend the unemployment too, right? Yes. Well, that's that's where we are is I, th I feel very, very good with the bill that the Republicans just dropped in the Senate that, that we've got 10 weeks, but but that's not enough. I'm, I, I'm happy that the 10 weeks is in there, but it either needs to be 20 weeks or restart. So that, again, that's what I said earlier. The question is, do we have a, a two-pronged push, 20 weeks of restart? Or do we go restart, 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 restart? And, and again, we've, we've argued about that in these other Zoom calls. And, and But we'll come to a conclusion to answer somebody's question. There is a name to this bill, but there's no an acronym. You know, the, the letters don't line up to give you a clever word. And I don't remember the name of it. It's, you know, Bill. Well, hurry up and tell us because we need to get a gobo made. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's goofy. But uh, we, we will get a focus. Again, it, it'll probably take till Friday or maybe Monday or Tuesday of next week. What I've really got to do is dig it out from some of these legislators. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Just like uh, all these, they've told me, everyone's told me unequivocally from day one, no standalone bills, no standalone bills. And then, and then lo and behold, the house popped up, as you know, and said, we're going to do a standalone post office bill. Well, it will pass the house on Saturday, but that's the last you'll ever hear of it as a standalone bill. Uh, it's like both sides are trying to play the game with the other. You can't do a standalone, but I will. And then, no, well, no, you can't do one, but I will. And, and, and neither one of them are gonna happen. So, you know, we, I, I, we do have 10 weeks. Uh, we've got to either get it to 20 or get it to restart. And right now, if you had to ask my opinion, what are the chances of getting restart in there? I'm still sitting at 50-50 and not because of lack of support, but because as I told you earlier, when you score the thing uh, with the cost of it, no, those are the arms we're trying to twist right now is, is get them to understand we've got 135 billion uh, and you've earmarked another, they've actually earmarked another 90 billion. So 135 and 90 is 220. So that's the argument that we're having. You're really in the weeds with me now, but, but convincing uh, uh, the really conservative legislators that it's 220 billion with, when what they want to do is say, no, 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 that 135 billion, I know it's sitting in the other pot, but it really is part of this pot and it isn't part of this pot. So that's what we're arguing. Okay, so again, is there a name for the specific movement? If I am the Hawaii district manager and they're gonna say of what, what is uh, my Bob, the, the, we have dubbed the organization, we make events North America, and uh, our primary cause, the, the parent cause is we make events because it aligns with the global initiative. Red Alert Restart is our focus for the U.S. legislation. Uh, I appreciate the that. We make events. Since and you guys were asking is, about GOBA. And is Red Alert Restart. Yeah, if, since you guys were asking about GOBA, has anybody gone to the ApolloDesign.net? And the very first thing in the first page there is five different gobos specifically for this project. Yeah, so I've been talking with uh, Joel at Apollo and Marsha <clears throat> has been working very closely with Ann at Roscoe and both companies have uh, supported our mission here and awesome. very graciously and, and, um, and we're extremely you know, grateful and thankful to them. So I think Anne's actually on this call still, if, if I recall. But She had to um, jump off, but yeah, she was on it until about five yeah. minutes ago. Yeah, so yes, we have worked uh, and you know, we were pushing for 100% free gobos for everyone, but because it's such an unknown number and it could be you know, 10,000 gobos or it could be 200 gobos, nobody was really that willing to commit to free, but they've all committed to you know, manufactured cost, basically. So very, very low prices on Gobos. And if I could add, Marcel, we do Please. have two, we have two designs coming out of Roscoe. We've got the hashtag we make events and we've got a hashtag red alert restart. Yes. And right yes. now we're starting production on size Bs and we'll keep information flowing as it gets, but we're literally just put this all together about an hour ago. Uh, hey, Marsha. Yo. We're going to need BMFL gobos for New York. So I don't know if you can work that out, but that's the Matt, thing. Matt, all of the, all the gobo orders are going to come from locals uh, and, and regionals. So we're just teeing uh, up the possibility of, of the artwork and then everybody's going to reach out individually. Copy that. Thank you. Are we done with Michael? Poor guy needs some sleep. He needs a rest. He's probably got to jump on 42 more Congress people calls. We have to have a toast to Michael and say thank you. You are fabulous. Hell yeah. You have mobilized all of us. Good job, Michael. You are a, you're a good man. Well, let, let me close by saying first and foremost, thank you to everybody on here. I've put this in the emails a lot, but I do truly mean it. The power is in the numbers. And, and, and what I get back, from all of these legislative folks is just that we have overwhelmed them. Uh, the, we're being out lobbied by the restaurant people. 
uh, but, but we've overwhelmed them with the reach out and the personal touch. Uh, one of the things that I'm, that I'm uh, uh, battling at the moment is, and I've mentioned this to some of you, uh, there's, there's about 10, 10 to 12 million of us. That, there's only about four to five million restaurant workers and restaurant workers don't spend a career in the restaurant business. They work a year, two or three or four for the most part. And they don't have a way to pull them together like we do through all of our media, through things like this, just through, through what we do, through who we are. We are this band of gypsies. So they don't have the touch. But one of the things they've been trying to do, and, and up until two days ago, I was fearful it was going to happen. And I've shared this with you. They were trying to pull the trigger point uh, for lost revenue and restart from 50% to 20%. And when you pull that trigger point down to 20%, the CBO score goes up to six, seven, eight hundred billion dollars, and it'll never work. So uh, another thing that we've been doing that you would never know is fighting to keep that lost revenue trigger at 50 percent, because 50 percent lets most of us participate in restart. But I say when, when you tumble it down to 20, all kinds of people fit in there. And, and th these are the kind of things that we're working on behind the scenes that are that are so in the weeds. Uh, that it would be completely transparent to most people. But, but I do believe, uh, I do believe we're going to get at least 10 weeks. Uh, I'm praying and working and hoping that we get you know, most elements of restart stuck in there. And there's one other piece. When this all began, there was absolutely positively going to be no more relief, positively. Well, now they're talking about another relief bill. So if we can get across this hump and get some money fed through to our industry, then I guess we start again. Uh, I'm not saying that will happen, but at least they're having those conversations. And I think that's because both sides know they're not going to get everything they want. And uh, Ms. Hang, Ms. hang in there and have faith. Mr. Strickland, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Jason Bullock. Yes, Jen, you, you may. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm I'm curious because I live I live in the Long Island area, and there are there are some things that are starting to appear where they're like oh we can do a streaming gig we can do this we can do that, and you know do all the health things and everybody stands six feet away. I mean the management companies that I work with are now saying 2021 next summer, and just because you you are far more involved in this than anyone else. Dude, what are we supposed to do till next summer? That's a you know, I mean, that's that. Just my whole point is, if I could do a streaming gig, great. So what? I can make five hundred bucks for my family. Great. I can't get unemployment because I own my own company. I can't. I could get an SBA loan, but who the fuck out of anyone here wants to pay another loan? So what? What is that? What is people's answers? What is where? Where's the the connect? until we can go from 300 people to 15,000 people. It's, it's a very difficult thing to assess. That's, that's, I a, wanted great, to, that's a great question, sorry. Jason. And it gets down to you know, what you believe. And, and that's, that could be as many different answers as there are people on this call. I'll tell that's you certain. what I believe, uh, again, because of my medical role, they are going to have three, the three vaccines I've talked about, as well as four or five or six therapeutics in October, mid-October now. Mm. Uh, so if all of that comes out and the people start getting shots, you know, in, in my opinion, and this is just an opinion, but an educated one from working uh, in a hospital three times a day, uh, we're going to I, be largely- I, I, was, I was in one this morning, so. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're going to be largely inoculated you know, by January, February. So I do believe by, by January, February, by mid-March, we're going to be rolling. Now, Copy. Th there are a lot of people, and I won't name names, but, but, but there's a lot of people. That, you know, I was on two phone calls yesterday with very powerful people in the industry that just told me we're not going to be back till 2022. Yeah. Because blah, 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 blah. And I yeah. said, okay, now, now what, if, what if these uh, uh, vaccines come out and the therapeutics, and what if we are really, really healthy by January? And their answer, everyone that I've talked to that comes at it from that point of view, their answer is, well, that's just not going to happen. Now, how they know that, I don't know. But everyone of them said, well, that's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And, and, it's, 
and it's interesting you put it in that framework, uh, Mr. Strickland, because again, even, even today as someone who literally got out of the hospital four hours ago, there was a COVID test, everything was looked at, but I mean, do management people and tour management people now have to start planning? Oh yeah, we need a nurse practitioner on the bus at all times. Is that the only, because the only other way I see forward is to do one-offs until we know we can minimize the risk across people. But if you're going to put 12 people on a bus, then one of those people should probably be a nurse if this shit's still going on. Well, again, that depends on where the virus is in February, doesn't it? And, and I, yeah, we'll, exactly. I completely, that's why I was, agree, I was agreeing. It, 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 yeah, if, it's my the, if my theory is correct, then we'll, you know, we'll be healthy and well. Now, having said that, we have to take into account, to your point, uh, we have to take into account the venue and their rules and regulations, the bus company and their rules and regulations, mm -hmm. the management company. And, and uh, you know, I've spoken to, uh, uh, I've spoken to a bunch of managers and a bunch of artists and a bunch of building people, and, and they've all got different points of view. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think until we get to a place where there is holistically an agreement that it's safe to work, yeah. we're going to have issues. Now, I, I do believe we'll get there by February or March. That's just based on what I know. I could be wrong. You have better information than most people, Mr. Strickland. So I would be willing to <laughs> judge that your your opinion is right. There definitely there definitely needs to be one in every venue. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, I mean, we, but, Jim, but, Jim Digby but, and Event Safety Alliance are on the case, and, and there's a whole set of us working on those kind of issues, sort of over here on the side. And and I suspect by the time we get to January, there'll be a pretty robust protocol and, and industry standard slash situation coming through uh, the Event Safety Alliance. You know, they've already stood up the protocols, but they're working now on protocols going forward. And uh, so I think that will help us. And that's sort of going back to the thing I mentioned ages ago about having a, a gold seal of approval uh, to, to move and to go forward. But you, you can't jump people's uh, emotion. You know, th there are people that just don't want to do it. And uh, yeah. Elton John has announced that he's not going to do anything next year. He's not going to go out until middle of the middle of 23 is no 22. So, so that's Elton John done. Uh, Let's face it. That may be retirement on his part, right? Yeah. yeah. So, Elton John is not a spring chicken. No, yeah. no. I mean, I think that's becoming an issue for a lot of artists right now that, you know, intended on finishing, you know, end of the road tours or whatever they're calling them. Um, you know, they're sitting back thinking, am I ever going to play again at this point? I, I, I mean, I think, I think many of us on this phone calls, excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt you at all. I, 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 I feel a lot of us are the same way. As when are we going to go back to do a show? I, mean, as I know, as I know, I know many of you on this call from many, many years across my entire career. And I just want to know when I can fucking go back and go run a goddamn lighting console for a fucking show. Jason, we all want to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> You're special. Jason, let's, let's frame your you question. You are special. Let's frame your question, Jason, in, in real terms. Yes, please. Let's say, let's say that next year you could, you could work steady all year and make nope. $45,000, $50,000. Yes. Uh, that's, you're back, but are you? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. If the work is yeah. so skinny that, yeah, I'm busy, but, but, but I'm not, you know, I'm not out there cranking my day rates or my weekly or, you know, however it is that everybody gets paid. No, it, and, 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 and go ahead. That's sorry. weird. Mr. Mr. Strickland, it is it is also from uh, from the, the management people that I work with, and some of you know who they are, and some of you don't. But the point was, they were like, "Hey, listen, we'll keep taking care of you for the next year, but next year when it's a tour time, you're gonna get no design fee. You're not gonna get any of your normal bump, and you know what? We might have to cut your rate a little. But you know what? If you're gonna pay my rent." or my mortgage for the next three months, I am willing to take that concession. But I feel it's a very hard piece of information across a lot of us that what in the fuck are we supposed to do? And, it, and I find that interesting, especially because, you know, the DNC conventions are on and everything else and everybody's politically wound up right now. At the same time, what am I supposed to do tomorrow? 
I mean, and that, and that's, and I only put that in as a specific, very small exemplification, but if you're not making a check and you're not doing this and I have to go to the grocery store tomorrow, how do I take care of my family? Uh, I can't get it. So you, I, you can't, I, I actually have, I have a couple of points to that. So number oh, one, please, please, Marcel. So number one, Michael, how do you feel about being called Mr. Strickland? Does that make you feel <laughs> really? <Yeah>. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Jason. <laughs> Strick, Strickland. When I met you, it was with Dizzy Gosnell when I used to live with Eric. Perry oh my God. In, in Dizzy's got to be Wisconsin. older than you, Michael. Yeah. No, he's not. But I met, but I met Dizzy. I met Dizzy through Nook. I Who'd love, you live so, with, Jason? I love Nook, too. Yeah. Who did you live with, Jason? Uh, I lived with Nook. Oh, okay, Nook, okay. Uh, yeah, Nook Schoenfeld. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Nook and, well. is and or was and here. Uh, I've heard of that yeah. guy. Yeah, he, he yeah, taught me here? how to use a hawk, too. And you know what? When I was a kid, as I looked through these screens right now, yes, Mr. Ravitz, yes, you were one of the first people when I worked for Dan English at Morpheus back in the day. So this is now, this is now Jason Bullock. This is your life. No, no. <laughs> well, this is just that's, Bullock. That's not, dropping. It's just, it's, ju it's just me. Yeah. But the point no, being, but the, the uh, thing is, what though, I was Jason, asking. No, no, Jason. The thing is, you are where everyone is right now. Everyone's frustrated. Everyone wants to go back to work. Everyone's yeah. like, when can I do a gig again? When can I go back yeah. to work again? And you know, I mean, there's a lot of political stuff to all of this, so I'll avoid yeah. all of that. But the thing yeah. is, we were all shut down by the government, yep. told we can't yep. go to work, told we can't do shows, told we can't yep. do any of these things. And yep. we can't get back to work until the government says, okay, guess what? Now you have a green light and you can go ahead and do these things. So, I mean, I think at this point, we're all in pretty much exactly the same position. And you're an individual I'm a company. There's a lot of people on this call who are companies who are also struggling through the exact same. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're a, an LLC or whatever, but, but what I'm saying is I have, you know, multiple employees. Uh, Michael has lots of employees. A lot of the companies yeah. out here have lots of employees. And, and yeah. so I'm not saying one plight or, or problem or, or situation is different than no. the other. I'm they just saying all we, we all they stuck. All we all suck. We all have bad situations going on right now. But, and we're but all trying I, to find a way through it. So, you know, but Mar some people. Mar Sorry. Sorry. Go, go ahead. On. Go on. Uh, no, one of, the, one of the interesting things I was going to say is that all of us at one point or another have worked for a client that it didn't work out and it was just time to go. And that's fine because you went home, you maybe had two weeks of being pissed off, but we all found another gig. We all found another job. And it is very concerning to me from lack of a better way to put it, a mental standpoint is if we don't know when shows are going to happen, if we don't know what conditions they're going to happen and let's bare minimum, just cut it, say in the next three months, there's not going to be a big concert. What, what is that? What are all of us supposed to do? Well, so one of the things, one of the ways I would answer that is exactly what we're a lot of us right now are doing which is raise awareness. And so basically raise our hand and say, hey, people out there in the general public, you know, we're kind of screwed right now. I understand you can still go get your, you know, Outback steak or you can still go get your Costco stuff or you can do your, you know, tile with Home Depot or whatever. But guess what? Yeah. We can't do shit. And so, yeah. you know, a lot of this is like everything I'm doing right now is really just to wait, raise awareness for our industry and for what we're doing and what we're trying to do. And, you know, that's all we can do, buddy. I mean, I, oh, at this point, I agree. I, 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 and I what, agree. And you. what Michael's doing, what, you know, Michael, Michael makes his living in the lighting business, not in the, not in the political, uh, you know, arena. And so Michael, and I'm not blowing smoke up his skirt or anything, but Michael right now is working 15, 16 hour days talking to Congress people and all these people. And I think there's a little bit of ego involved there, but I think 99% of what Michael's doing is absolutely to help you, Jason, to help me, to help Matt, to help uh, you know Kevin O'Brien, to help, I, I could name every single person on this call and say, yeah. Michael's got our backs. And yeah. you know what? Guess what? In a weird way, I'm trying to have people's backs. Matt's trying to have people's backs. 
Brad and Ellie's we're all, we're, we're our, all, our we're all trying to have each other's backs, right? Absolutely, now. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jay, hey, but Jason. guess what? It's okay to be pissed off, too. Hey, let, Jason. Let me, let, yes, let, me yes, give Jason, let me give Jason a timeline. I, I would bet you 90%, Jason, none of us are going to be back to full, full pay, full, you know, full working conditions as we know them. I would, yes, sir. I would say that the soonest will be middle to the end of March. You know, between now and then, it's going to be catch as catch can, do this thing, do that yep. thing, do the other thing. Yep. So that's yep. just kind of grinding, isn't it? You're just kind of grinding through and yep. waiting. So I, I think the earliest that we'll be back to, yeah, gosh, I'm back at it now, would be middle to end of March. Uh, how long could it be? Uh, it, no. <laughs> it could be the hey. summer, but I don't believe that. I, I, I believe that it, by the middle to the end of March, we'll, we'll be working like we want to work. Hey, hey, Jason. Uh, yes, sir. You want to slam on a console? I want you on my New York team. So hit me up offline, all right? No, oh, yeah, copy, copy. Thank you. So, Jason, to your, to yes, your point, to hopefully give a, a, a little bit of positivity toward how things are changing, one of the things we're seeing on the very few productions that are, in fact, moving forward at this time is the new policy of having a COVID safety officer. And they have people that are have gone through the classes and have an understanding. And, you know, that that's a start in the right direction. It's not I necessarily agree. the thing that puts you totally at ease, makes you really feel warm and fuzzy. But it, the reality is that at least there's movement forward and productions are taking it very seriously. They're budgeting yep. for it appropriately. Their clients are an understanding of it because they want to go to work and get their messages out the way they do just yes, as much course. as everybody else does. Um, and so, so these things are happening and, you know, we're, we're now having to deal with that on the few things that are, are so, hey, Brad, what do we do in the meantime? We start looking for the avenues to get into those productions that are in fact happening. Despite yeah. just, to, just to piggyback real quickly off Patrick, Jason, you know, the thing that's really good also with the compliance officer position and it not necessarily taking place yet in our industry, but taking place in film, TV, is we're, we're able to see the models that they're working off of, which is going to allow us when yeah. our phase opens up to really operate that much more efficiently. Um, yeah. I know that on my end, it's, it's allowing me to rewrite writers. It's allowing me to have the dialogue with the venues because just like there's emergency evacuation plans. If, if we open up with a COVID environment, we're gonna to wanna to have, to, have to know what kind of COVID plan they have. If the Dave, office, you know. it's, it, it's funny, Dave, I was actually talking to one of my friends this morning who said exactly the same thing. Yep. He was like, listen, if I have six feet, this, that, blah, 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 blah. But it was the same thing is there, because it's a bar and they can only have a hundred people in and you're like, okay, great. You're gonna have a hundred people in. But any manager that we know, and many people who are on this call who are managers, that's not going to cover the guarantee. That's not going to cover the bills. You know what I mean? So is it going to pay for you to fly out the video guy, the lighting guy, the audio guy, and the monitor guy? Is it going to pay you to fly all them out if you're only going to make $10,000? No, but is it going to potentially work for your social media aspect where you can go and then sell three songs for 99 cents. It, it, it becomes a, a quandary of, of which way to proceed with that. Yeah. It's definitely a programming question, but I think that's where, you know, I mean, as much as I love hearing dates from Michael, I know it's probably also hard for him to speculate on some of them because, you know, it, it's, Every time there's a timeline created, we have seen it move and move and move gradually on numbers. And uh, guilty, yeah. <laughs> guilty for sure. I called it. I yeah. used to call it day ninety-one. You know, on day ninety-one, what are we going to look like? And we're now at day, you yeah. know, one hundred and fifty-six well, or something. I don't know. What, what's funny, Marcel, is you know, yesterday Patrick and I, when we were on a quick call, we were joking how a month before the lockdown, we were at Polestar saying, oh, this is not gonna be anything. It's really not gonna impact our industry out here. And a month later, you know, we, we were all on flights heading home from wherever our tours were. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. but, but also on, on the other token, it definitely does seem, you know, from seeing what's happening now, 
I think, you know, the timeline, knowing dates from talking with bookers, talking with promoters, I, I kind of think Michael is pretty spot on on where it is. It's just a question on whether that timeline gets moved at all. Because we also have to look at consumer confidence, getting them back in where the economy is and making sure, hey, if we, we start it back up, how many tickets are we going to be able to sell? And, you know, the last thing we want is the market also overly saturated where there's a lot of acts on the road and nobody's buying tickets. Yeah. You know? And I mean, my personal opinion on that is, has always been that fans are willing to go to shows. Fans want to buy tickets. Fans want to, you know, I mean, restaurants have proven that. Everybody yeah, people bowling out. Tickets, well, all these like little events that are popping up. I did something up in like Woodstock or something. They were sold out. They had yeah. tons of people there. No, people want to go to shows. You know, yes, they want to feel safe, but at the same time, they're going to buy tickets and assume that Dave, you're making them safe. So, but well, I, you now, know, now now is the time to double ticket prices if you're. Uh, out. Which, AEG but, but you know what? I, mean, I don't know who said that. Everyone wants a, to get that out. To, to get back to Patrick's point, you know, that's where to me, stuff like the compliance classes, even though it's very basic, it's still a roadmap and it, it works on a skill set that we're all going to need when we get out of this. Yeah, no, completely agreed. Um, yeah, just, well, let, this, let, me share, let me share one thing, Marcel, because it ties into this conversation. I, I, I hope all of you all analyze every piece of information that comes your way and let me prove a point. Yesterday, I was on the phone with the person that, that told me for 30 minutes, unequivocally, I talked to Live Nation. I know the people at Live Nation, et cetera, et cetera. Live Nation is totally shut down, doing absolutely nothing until 2022. I have several jobs on with Live Nation right now, and I've got more planned. So this person was talking out of the left side of their mouth. Now, I didn't tell them that. Yeah. But, but there's a lot of people that will tell you they know for sure, you know, whatever. And I think they're just trying to project their, their point of view. And that's why when I said to you, uh, 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 Jason, about the, uh, when we'll get back to work, that's just my opinion. Uh, but I think it's fairly educated, but you know, it could fall one way or another. But, but there's so many people. Uh, Mark Geiger, the booking agent for William Morris, is the one that said uh, uh, middle of 2022. And he will not back down from that. I'm not mad at him or anything, but but that's his opinion. But yeah. also, if something blows up, like one of these vaccines well, I do want to be respectful out. of Michael, because I know that he probably is working longer hours than anyone here. And if anyone has any questions for Michael, ask him now. Otherwise, let's cut him loose so that he can, uh, God forbid, like get Sleep. dinner and have a life watch uh, CNN, which I know you're a big fan of? Watch anything. I do. I watch everything to figure Anyone? out what politically. Hey, yeah. is, is there no. a way that you can blast you. To your email group? Thank you when so you much. Is there a way you can let us know, Michael, when you'll be on Squawk Box, when you have a tighter time frame? Absolutely. The second I that do, I'll send you email. I, I do know it's Tuesday between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. East Coast time. Thank That's you very much, Michael. Oh. They're going to give me an exact time, so I'll blow that out once I get it. You still can record. That. Marcel, did you lose your audio? He's on. What the just mute. happened here? Can you hear us, Marcel? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Something bad just happened. You didn't know, pay your Zoom bill. I still hear you. We, 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 were tr we were trying to think about good ideas and the internet shut us I can't hear you. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all very much. I'm, I hey, do Mike. actually have another Zoom, so I thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, thank Michael. You, Michael. Thank thank you. Care, Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Up. Bye, have a good night. Thank, thank you, Michael. Hey, Mr. Strickland, thank you for your work. I would I would uh, love to chat with you further. If you you're out any time, Jason. You my number's on the emails. Indeed. Cheers. All right. Be well, sir. Oh, Thank you for your Jeff, effort. Jeff Rabbits had a really good question, and I don't know if he's still here, but he, he asked me a question right before the call, and I had no answer to it. So, Jeff, if you're still here, can you ask that? Uh, Jeff said he had to run. Oh, no, shit. No, I don't. Mr. Rabbits has yeah, departed. At zero. He hasn't departed. He just left the party. 
Yeah, he was well, asking me something about can COVID be passed through Zoom? friggin' haze or something. I don't remember. It was a crazy question that I didn't even understand. Hang on, I'm going to look it up. Hey, man, all you need is a goddamn physicist from any grad student level thing to be able to figure out that question. <laughs> I, feel I, had a, I had a guy you, yesterday you know, saying he was putting hydrogen you, peroxide into a DF-50 yesterday. I was quite surprised for about God's that. God's sake. Wow. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's, that's you know, off the reservation. Here's the question. Do you know if anyone has studied the transmission of possible virus in a room via haze? Hmm. They no. say haze might increase transmission from what I've read so far because uh, it increases particulate and uh, uh, water particulate coming out of people's you mouths. Mean, yeah, because yeah, like if, some, if somebody breathes it in and then exhales it out and they have the virus, well then, yes, they're going to pass it along. You just inject it with Clorox? It's, it's, because, of the, it's because of the humidity is what, what they think the transmission level is. So what's, what's the answer to Jeff then? It, it, it increases the possibility, but is not a direct transference vehicle. Okay. It could uh, be. It could be. Angie, That's Angie, the and Angie, nobody Angie. here has a doctor's license, so let's, let's all speculate. You know, Springsteen's never been a big guy with haze anyway, so I don't know why I'm mad at Springsteen. Hey, guys. Angie just posted something in the group chat from Look Solutions, so everyone check that out, please. Uh, FAQ uh, for fog, haze, and COVID-19. Chris, can you walk us through your uh, trial, dude? How you doing and what's... Uh, my trial's gone fine so far. Uh, I take my temperature on a nightly basis. Uh, I'm on day seven uh, after my first shot. Um, I get a second shot uh, September, first week of September. And uh, I've had no side effects whatsoever. Uh, no sweats, no chills, no fevers. Uh, and uh, one of my buddies who signed up, he got his shot as well, and he's been doing fine too. Chris, is that Pfizer or Moderna that you're on? Uh, I'm on the I'm on the Pfizer uh, I'm in the Pfizer uh, vaccine three for trial. I think and they your beard looks a little fuller. Got? Maybe maybe it grows hair. I think your beard looks fuller. Does it? Well, my hair does. Damn good, Chris. You got a shiny good. coat. This does. Yeah. Chris, did they let you know which one you got? Obviously not, right? No, they w they'll let you know at the end of the study. Yeah, we got the same thing here. So yeah. I think they got the Evo. 50 50, dude, you have no idea. Oh, I've got actually, a third here because they're doing the 50% are the 100%, 50%, and placebo here. Oh, they're doing three levels. Oh, interesting. Well, as long but, as it doesn't get your taste buds, my friend. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, I that, that I don't was have I don't have And when I read the side effects could, in, you know, decrease taste bud uh, sensation, I was like, oh no, oh no, Chris. I got so, extra taste buds, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I can say Chris is on. Are you doing the uh, the same trial that that Chris McBean is doing? I forgot. Are you? Doing no, it? it's not. It's a different one. But Jaeger still tastes like Jaeger. It doesn't taste like vodka. <laughs> but well, in the funny. country wants to know, reach out to me and I will get you hooked up with a local uh, station for the trials. Because there's, there's multiple trials going on. I've gotten people trial locations in New York, in Las Vegas, um, in LA. Uh, so if- I just want to wait and see if you become superhuman and then I want the genes after that. Are they are they offering you a spiff, Chris? Is that why you, you can hook us up? No. Uh, well, yeah, if you, you go in New Jersey, if you do it in New Jersey, I get a spiff, but none none of the others I get a spiff. I'm just doing that because I know people in the uh, in the industry, so I can reach out to them and they tell me where the local places are. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get a spiff here either, but I did lose weight again. That's good. I was gonna say, Chris, man, you look fantastic, Jason. No, shut up. Shut up. You're looking slim. I hope so. It is. It, that, it, 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 that shot will take 10 pounds off of you and yeah. somehow put $100 in your pocket, too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you can't afford the food. So I wanted to bring up something really quickly because he's reading text, but 
my friend Cosmo over there has uh, been one of the very few people who's helped save this 9-11 tribute. And he's not going to take any credit here. I know that. But 9-11 um, tribute, as many of you know, died completely. It was gone. It was canceled. And Cosmo said, hell no, that ain't going to happen. And he was one of the group of people who dug in really hard and saved it. And I think that's pretty friggin' cool. That's but I'm excited. Cool. I, just, I just had but a next nice year of someone who's really high up in it and, and they, I lit a fire under them and, and they got with their people and they pushed it all the way to Governor Cuomo and, and Cuomo, Cuomo uh, reinstated it, which I, I can't believe they even canceled it. But the fact that they considered it was, was uh, I can't believe it. Yeah. Um, but you know, one thing I told you earlier, but the, the, the good thing, the, the kind of a double-edged sword here is, is, is I've been working on this uh, uh, We Can Make Events um, Red Alert uh, gig, but uh, since we've moved it, it now coincides. Uh, I, I've been honored that I've been asked to be on the, uh, the, the crew, the team putting in the lights for the, for the tribute, the light and tribute, the tribute and light. So I'm honored that they asked me to come and do that. So um, unfortunately though, it's, we load in on the 1st of September. But I'm, having said that, I'll be in New York and I get to see the red lights in New York, which really excites well, me. Well, and just pop a red light in there somewhere. <laughs> so. Cosmo's going to be on our team. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, it, Cosmo, it's really amazing what you did there. And, and uh, you know, I know you're going to downplay it, but you were a big part of bringing that thing back. So very cool. Has anybody had uh, any traction with Clear Channel yet? It's been two days since I've heard anything from them. Anybody? I think it's probably been years since I've heard anything from them, Don. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing about starting a movement is that it comes from a very small grassroots idea and a very small grassroots group, group of people. So last week on this call, I said, you know, raise your hand if you want to be part of our uh, you know, sort of board of directors or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and people, Matt, Marsha, Brad, you know, a, a bunch of people, Cosmo, who are on this call, raised their hands. And I said, okay, you're our board of directors. And we went and had our meeting 36 hours later, and this thing just happened. So what I didn't do was say, okay, you're an unbelievable expert with the media and you know everybody at Fox and, and you know, this company and that company and whatever. And so you're going to be our media person. And you over there, you know everybody in this world and you know every... All we did was we said, hey, we're a group of people who are going to try and do this incredible thing. So then we reached out from there and went, okay, let's get more people. And we did. And there's a lot of people on this call outside this call who who joined this mission so we don't have a super powerful PR person yet we've got a couple of firms one is through Robert Roth a friend of his who owns a PR firm and then there's another one I don't even remember who they are and um, but you know do we have somebody who has access to you know all the big shows no and if you do, or if anyone does, certainly we'd love to reach out and bring people on board because, you know, we've got a, an amazing group of people doing a lot of really cool things. So the last thing we want to do is fall short of, of getting this thing promoted. One thing I do want to mention too is Andrew Gumper, who's on this call, is working on in Las Vegas with a group of other people who some may be here. I don't know if they are or not, but um, Andrew's working on some stuff in Vegas where we're creating a pretty incredible night in Vegas that's going to include, you know, all kinds of stuff where the strip turns red and, and the stratosphere and Caesars and all these different buildings and, and fireworks and whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, this has been cool. This has been a really, really unbelievable sort of moment in time. A lot of fun. The most, I, I haven't been excited about this in anything in six months. Good. That's, that's cool to hear. You know? That's cool to hear. I mean, a lot of us, I think, fall into that. Uh, when it gets me out of bed in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I do have some exciting news. I'm about 85 to 90% sure I have uh, Niagara Falls on board. 
Just found but, out. What? I just have one more person to talk to, but I think I got the that. That is unreal, Matt. So, I mean, I will say, as a Canadian, the American oh. night will suck, oh. and the Canadian one's really good. However, it'll do, right? And so, you know, the other thing is, I mean, today I was hearing, like, we've got the space needle that is, like, this close to agreeing to go red on that night. We've got Empire State Building this close. We've oh, got, like, all, what's that? Somebody said something. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, some just really, really incredible things are going on. So it's very cool. Uh, hi, yeah, really close with the is Manny. I'm with the uh, Another Planet Entertainment. You're with what, Manny? Sorry. Oh, sorry, Another Planet Entertainment. Uh, we run the Bill Graham Civic. Uh, we just got invited to this conference, but uh, we are going to light up the Bill Graham Civic downtown San Francisco with the City Hall. That is unreal. Thank you so much, Manny. That's amazing. Very cool. So I assume you're working with Maria there in San Francisco? Did we lose you? You muted, Manny. Sorry about that. Uh, bad internet. What I was saying is I'm with another Planet Entertainment in San Francisco, Berkeley, and uh, we're going to be doing the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium, which is downtown San Francisco. And I believe the city hall is joining us also. And we're working with the local uh, group to uh, see what other city uh, venues we can get. Manny, Manny is the man. He did our Audi stuff there when we, when we were at Bill Graham. It's good times. He, he, he'll make sure it works. Thank you so much, Manny. Amazing. Very cool. So yeah, I mean, this, Everybody is that stuff, this is the kind of stuff that we're, you know, hearing on a multiple times per day. Like I said, we've got this, like, uh, we've got this WhatsApp thing group where people are popping this stuff up all day going, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. And it's just, it's, it's unreal. It's, it's like, I know I seem like I'm tired because I am, but um, it is just something that gives you so much energy and it's so much fun and it's really, really cool. So. Bye, Eric. So anyways. So Marcel, can I, can I address Jason's concerns just for a second? Of course. Jason, so, Jason, will you let Chris address your concerns for a moment? Please, please. So we've had a lot of events here, uh, whether it be studio, that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, please, sir, um, yes, please. Some of the ones that we have done, including NBC Universal, the Emmy Awards, they're doing our instant test. So we're hanging out in a parking lot getting an instant test before we run into a studio to be all together. We've also had some other ones that gave us the swabs or the spit one a week before we even show up, before we get on a plane. So there's not a standard, but most of these companies are looking out for that option to make sure we're safe whether we get on a plane, whether we get on a bus, whether we even get the transport from the hotel to, to the venue. When we're in the hotel, we're trying to stay in a bubble. So there is our companies that we work for and our company ourselves are trying to do the right thing. So we see it moving along, in, including with our, our uh, clients. So I think they finally got the picture that eventually here in the next few months, they're all going to be hopefully be on the same program. And that means more stuff for us later, sooner, faster. And I do believe that as well. I, I know that the people I know doing film and television right now, as well as some friends down in the NBA bubble, uh, there are very exhaustive and complete uh, COVID protocols in place. And yeah. they cost a lot of money. Uh, which is why the only films back in production are coming from major studios who can afford to do that. Exactly. Uh, I think and, it's setting a good blueprint for some of the stuff coming up. Well, we are seeing as well, and they're actually nurses, registered nurses doing the tests, and, and I know it's costing them some money because we're getting instant tests. We, we, we're not allowed in the studio until we get cleared. So it's, it, but it's positive. It's very positive. They're going towards let's get back to work, and I hope well, you can understand that. We, I've, done, I've done two 
I, I, I know what Chris shows, and, 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 and they're as, saying that they're averaging about a hundred thousand dollars a week just in COVID costs for yeah. for a prime time show with you know one hundred and fifty people on set. That that's that's basically where they're starting to come down with all of the testing two to three times a week. Uh, their costs are that, running Josh? anywhere between one hundred and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is obviously something that isn't necessarily budgeted for shows that were in production before we got shut down. But this is going to have a knockdown effect on a lot of other things. That's just a that's just a, a much bigger line item than I think any of the production companies were planning on. Josh, so what are you that are doing it now? right? It's obviously costing them an arm and a leg. Josh, what are you working on now? Uh, we just finished up Supermarket Sweep and Card Shark Season 2 on two different lots. One was at Barker Hangar in, in Santa Monica, uh, and then the other one was out CBS Radford. So cool. working with lots, and it, it's so many different people getting involved. It's, it's pretty – it's now a whole new position in production that they have a COVID manager uh, that's yeah. working right alongside the production managers and line producers – because it, it's just so much to organize when 150 people and talent coming in at different times. And it, it's, it's, been, it's impressive Dude. to see the level that they've gone to. Jo Josh, Joshua, I would say 200%, dude, it is amazing how our industry has actually just manned up and like, great, if I got to have a test every day, I'm going to have a test every fucking day. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah. Well, the, only, like, uh... the, only, the only thing that's going to be complicated across the board is who's going to pay for it? Do we uh, cut our production smaller? Do we cut our rigs smaller? Because we all need of to those, have all of those people. things are up in the air. All of those yeah. things are on the table. Yeah. And we've we've seen it as well. And actually, it went back to the client as NBC, but then they put it in as an expenditure for insurance reasons to yeah. avoid liability. So well, they were and, uh, and, the other, and the other thing that we really realized with our staging supervisors and everybody else is that when you have people set up on the call sheet where, where our industry has always been really good is like, don't worry about it. We'll just call 12 people and they'll be here in an hour uh, and we can get this done. You, you have to be tested within 48 hours of starting. You have to be tested on site. So that's another thing when you're planning out your crews. Uh, you need to have a little bit of fat there so that if someone is held up in the parking lot, you're not you're not up against it. And everybody on the crew has to have a backup for whatever show position they're running. And to be honest with you, I 100% I have confidence that they're working the right way. They really are. The stuff that we've seen over the last three months has improved every week. Every week, and I'm getting better and better every time. And Chris, 200%, 200, 200%, I agree. Yeah, 200, 212%, Jason. So today, I don't know if anyone saw this uh, Scott Chmielewski post that he put on, and I don't know if it was today or yesterday or the day before, but I saw it today. I'm in the middle of my fucking... <laughs> it's Wednesday. I better mute him. Um, Scott Chmielewski put on this uh, America's Got Talent thing today, and I don't know if anyone saw like his sort of front of house setup that he had, but... It was just incredible. It was like so cool. And he explained the whole thing about how their whole setup is. And, you know, I gotta admit like to me, so I watch, I, this has been a thing. My, my kid, since he was like, I don't know, five years old or something, we've watched this show. It was just a me and Jeremy, my son thing. And I think the show kind of sucks right now without an audience and all that stuff. However, it's really cool what Scott's doing and it's really cool what the whole crew is kind of putting together and trying to make a show out of it, but it's just not as good. So that's just me. I don't know. Marcel, is that on his Facebook page or LinkedIn or where can we find it? It's uh, Facebook. Facebook. Scott's Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. And did he really, also really get cool. nominated for an Emmy for that show? Maybe recently, I, I think I think he got nominated for an Emmy recently. I believe I believe so. I yeah. mean, the show itself is incredible. Everything yeah, about Noah, it. Noah incredible. Mitz and the entire team was nominated. Yes. Yeah. No. From an entertainment standpoint, it's just not as good when there's no audience and when the when the acts are like zooming in and all that kind of stuff. It's just not the same. I don't know. And that comes more from my son than than from me. Like he's just like dad. I don't know because we've watched it literally for I don't know. 12 years or however long it's been on him and I has kind of been our thing, but which show is this? 
America's Got Talent, AGT. Yeah, we did we did the Emmy Awards, you know, uh, nomination thing at our site in CTLA, and it was a little different with not even film cameras in there or press in there. Yeah. It was a little yeah. strange. And now yeah. we got just hired to do whatever this is coming up next month. We we don't know what it is, but it'll probably be very virtual. It, it's it, it's di very different. Does anyone have anything to share or say before we sign off here? I got two things. Oh. One, Marsha, I love the low hop shirt. Oh, she just came back to her desk. What I mean, is it? 4D Romaine has been like forever. Oh, from yeah. Chinatown, the best Chinese restaurant in Manhattan. Like into that basement. They right, say it's it the best because they only eat it after drinking, so it yeah. tastes the best. <laughs> drunk at 4 a.m., otherwise you will not eat there. You go it's to the 24-hour hour underground and Chinese. You have That's to go hilarious. downstairs where yeah. the locals and the cops go. There's no one down there that speaks English. That's the so best funny. Food. What's number two, Kevin? I had my first order in five and a half months go out today. And it felt awful. Yay! Orders are good! It wasn't big. But it was it an don't order. matter. Orders are good. Yeah. Sell something any to Chris. Order. We'll Just take sell something to Chris. Order. It's all good. It don't yeah. matter. Sell something to Chris. Cool. He'll sell it back to you. You'll get a refund. You know, just keep money moving. That's, yeah. how, that's how the big banks do it, right? Yep. Hey, Kaminsky, what the hell is Herrick looking for a barge for? Uh, <laughs> Why not? Why um, not? So I, what, I gave him all, right. <laughs> all right. So what Herrick's planning on doing, it's moved to boats now. Okay. And he wants to put fixtures on boats and project onto the Brooklyn Bridge, onto large structures. We're, 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 He's just I trying to avoid permits. It's fine. I'm, yeah, I'm, that's I'm awesome. Go. Awesome. Awesome. Good. Awesome. We, got, we got some stuff going on here in New York, and it's weird, man. Yeah. Like, I it's like actually it. really, it's really beautiful because um, we're, we're taking this in a different direction in the theater sense where we're actually looking to do red ghost lights in every major Broadway theater, illuminating the sets of iconic Broadway shows and doing a video and photo campaign on that to help come kind of jump off of what we're doing here. It's if Kelly, Kelly has been an amazing resource and Brad, thank you for looping him in. Him and I are gonna do some amazing things in the city. Yeah, and just wait, just I, wait. I, I'm I so excited. It. No, I, I hope you don't it. want those boat lights back because that's just gonna end up in Sheepshead Bay in the hands of a bunch of dudes who used to live in Odessa. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, I, it's actually a request to anyone on this call. We are looking for ghost lights. So anyone in the New York City area that has ghost lights or knows where we can maybe it's get funny, some. Our numbers just started dropping, uh, dropping, and dropping, <laughs> and dropping, and dropping. And dropping. <laughs> Everybody's going. I gotta go. See you. Gaminski, I, I might know somebody to call. Just right. send me every picture. <laughs> send me every picture, every video, so that me and Rob Gibson can make sure it Don't, gets attached. Absolutely, and I will say that Kelly's team is so in bed with media and skill sets. Very like cool. we, we're gonna be sending you a ton of media, dude. Like we are, we're gonna have boots on the ground during our walk. That's gonna have professional DLSRs. We're gonna do a. We're gonna do a campaign that's very grassroots with people with their iPhones on the ground. It's it's gonna be awesome. I'm so Any, excited. Anything we can do pre pre event will also go into the sizzle reel for the press. So anything that can be done now will be the, a very big help to Rob for the, sure. The the hey, ghost. Matt, I, I will say the ghost. Them. Sorry, Marsha. One thing to Chris. The ghost light thing, we're doing this before the event. We're gonna get access we're we're working on getting access to these venues. We have a we have a contact at Radio City to light up Radio City with the with the dome in red and light the stage with the ghost light. Like we got some really, really Very awesome ideas. So I can have that tomorrow. We can have that tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, GF um, live, buddy. <laughs> hang on one sec. So, Christian Jackson, where are you at? You look like you're on a show site. Oh. Yeah, we're uh, loading in for uh, my first gig in uh, five months. Must be Whoa. fucking awesome, dude. Gigs are good. Sick. Gigs yeah. are good. 200%. Nice good. Dude. Fucking congrats. That's awesome. Nice Thanks. to see you.
<laughs> Good to see you too. So everyone, I am going to go because it's now seven o'clock. We've been on this for two hours. I appreciate everyone so much. And uh, I mean, for and those Marcel, of you, Marcel, before you oh, go, man, for God's I mean, sake, big round it's of drunken Steve you. Warren again, people. Yeah, <laughs> He's still up, man. man. We it's love incredible. you so much. Could you dance for us or something? Yeah. Someone get Jason Bullock a console, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. I'm finally leaving. Ah. <laughs> this is what happens when I have a bottle of wine during a Zoom call. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's like 3 a.m. right level. now. It's like 3 a.m. right now at the circle bar with like everybody kind of talking a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 This, this, this is like the. the Go ahead. Jason, how many months has it been since you've had to put your t-shirt off? Uh, I change it once every three days. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, that, so, so that's about it. But actually the last time I had it off for a show operation procedure, I actually had my MQ80 sitting in front of my TV and literally just jammed out with a Nine Snails song from my past and just literally right on, made a punt, punt page. And literally had to take my shirt off and throw my shoes on the floor. <laughs> and my wife walks in and she walks in and she goes, what in the fuck happened in here? I, said, I had to run a song. Right. I will say Jason's the, Jason's the only dude I know that dents his console. So, you know, it's a thing. You know what? I gotta go. Anyone that can send me pictures, anything red, even your own building, send it to us so we can get me and Jason and and Rob and everybody can get it on the pre. I'm gonna park. I'm gonna park my car on your lawn, Chris, and I'm gonna make your house red. How's that? So lame. Do you so want wow. a picture of my Mustang? <laughs> it's red. It'll still be red. I mean, the shit will still be red if the brake lights hey, are on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed you got the red light behind you. I'm so exactly. I'm so proud of you. I, I have my I have my 14 300 LED watt fucking useless fixtures that are good for lighting the wall. And you know what? My <laughs> front, the front of my house is good for a wall. Amazon's great. You can buy a dozen for 400 bucks. It's amazing. All right. I got to go. I'll see you guys. Thank we you. All. Have I have to go. Everyone Thank good. you. Bye, everybody. See you next Bye. week. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Ciao. Sure.